what we are witnessing in the Middle East is truly heartbreaking. Imagine waking up on a Saturday morning during one of your holy festivals, as families right across Israel did last week, to find that your loved ones had been murdered or kidnapped by Hamas terrorists. It is beyond words, and to, of course, be condemned in the strongest possible manner. <laughs> or imagine living in the Gaza Strip under constant bombardment right now. No food, no water, no power. Friends, tragically, we don't have to imagine. This is the reality for Israeli and Palestinian families alike. Too many innocent men, women and children are suffering. The hostages must be released and a humanitarian corridor must be open. Vital supplies let in and Gazans who want to leave must be allowed to leave. The blockade of Gaza must end. Conference, we are absolutely clear. The life of a Palestinian is equal to the life of an Israeli. It is right for the world to condemn the actions of Hamas, unequivocally. But any form of collective punishment, as we're seeing in Gaza, can never be justified. 2.2 cannot pay the price for the actions of Hamas. And here at home, to Scotland's Jewish, Muslim and Palestinian communities, you are communities that I love. And I want you to know, as First Minister, as a fellow human being, I share the pain and I share the sorrow that you're feeling. I've attended your synagogues, your churches, your mosques, your communities I've grown up with, I've danced with, I've laughed with. And in this last week, that I have shed many a tear with. Each and every person in Scotland from all of the vibrant communities of our nation must feel safe here. And as long as I'm First Minister, let me be abundantly clear. There is no room for anti-Semitism, Islamophobia or hatred of any kind here in Scotland. What did I say about making me greet? <laughs> Conference, the great American writer, Toni Morrison said this, no more apologies for a bleeding heart when the opposite is no heart at all. Danger of losing our humanity must be met with more humanity. In the past, people in Scotland and across the UK have opened our hearts and our homes. We've welcomed those from Syria, from Ukraine, and many other countries' conference. We must do so again. There are currently one million people displaced within Gaza. So therefore, I'm calling today on the international community to commit to a worldwide refugee programme for the people of Gaza. I'm calling on the UK government to take two urgent steps. Firstly, they should immediately begin work on the creation of a refugee 
the settlement scheme for those in Gaza who want to and, of course, are able to leave. And when they do so, Scotland is willing to be the first country in the UK to offer safety and sanctuary to those who are caught up in these terrible attacks. Conference, my brother-in-law is a doctor in Gaza. When we can get through to him on the phone, he tells us of scenes of absolute carnage. Hospitals running out of medical supplies, doctors, nurses, having to make the most difficult decision of all, who to treat and who to let die. That can't be allowed. Not in this day and age. So I therefore urge the UK government to support the medical evacuation of injured civilians in Gaza. And let me be clear. And let me be clear. Scotland is ready to play her part and our hospitals will treat the injured men, women and children of Gaza where we can. Delegates, an outward looking, an internationalist party, resolute in its support for human rights right around the world. Today, those values have never been more important. So that we can make our contribution abroad and build the fairer society we know is possible right here at home. This is meant to be a rich country. Yet it feels like too many are struggling, no matter how hard they work. It can seem like society is becoming even more polarised, when frankly there is a lot more common ground than we realise. People see all this and they want to know who has a plan to make their lives better, to make Scotland a fairer, a more prosperous country. Delegates, if we, the SNP, want to continue to be trusted by the people of Scotland. And if we, if we want to take them on our journey to independence, then we need to show them that we have the answers to these questions. A couple of weeks ago, we had a tough night in the Rutherglen and Hamilton West by-election. We can either spend time feeling sorry for ourselves or we can take another course of action. Let me tell you what that is. We roll up our sleeves. We work harder than ever before for the people of Scotland. And this is how I'm going to lead this party forward. It starts by standing by our values, sticking up for what we believe in, and always, every day, standing up for the people of Scotland. Friends, we have used our time in government to cement our social contract with the people. A contract that says, yes, those who earn the most should pay the most. But a social contract in which everyone benefits, regardless of wealth. I'm proud this SNP-led government, Scottish government, has brought our rail back into public ownership. A rail service that is run for people, not run for profit, and a rail service under this SNP government that has scrapped peak time fares. We've abolished prescription charges. We've made sure our will be paid at least £12 an hour. We've invested in our schools, more teachers and higher spending per pupil than anywhere in the UK. We've seen the biggest ever reduction in the attainment gap on literacy and numeracy in primary schools in a single year. We're helping families with the cost of living at times when they need it the most. Childcare provision, a rent freeze, free bus travel for young people, a conference, here is another choice 
the SNP have made. If you're a parent struggling on a low income, you're now entitled to £25 a week thanks to the Scottish Child Payment. When budgets are tight, that's a huge investment for any government to make. But it's the right choice. Do you know what it means? It means an estimated 90,000 fewer children in Scotland are living in poverty this year because of the actions of the SNP government. That's a government that's delivered and delivering for the people of Scotland. And friends, that delivery is, of course, in no small part down to my predecessor. Conference Nicola Sturgeon transformed Scotland. She reformed Scotland's public services. She improved the life chances of thousands of Scotland's young people. And we will never forget, never forget, in the toughest of times, our country faced. Nicola was the calmest of voices and the coolest of heads. So for all of this and more, we say thank you, Nicola. Delegates, people are rightly interested in what we have done for them. But if we're going to earn and re-earn their trust, what we're going to do for them in the future is more important. So let me tell you what we're going to do. I'll start with that most pressing of issues, helping people through these difficult times. Nobody in Scotland caused this Westminster cost of living crisis. But almost everybody in Scotland is suffering because of it. And I never thought that in 2023, people on above average salaries would be coming to my constituency surgeries asking for financial help. Nurses, teachers, police officers. These workers, they're the very backbone of Scotland's public services. People like them are being hit by this crisis too. We know that people are filled with dread when bills are going up and up. Now, we can't stop all bills from rising. But we're... ...what steps we can take to help. Council tax bills in Scotland are already hundreds of pounds a year lower than they are in We're committed to fundamentally reforming local taxation. We'll re-energise our work to do just that. We have consulted on what level the council tax should be next year. At conference, we have listened and we have reached our decision. I can announce to the people of Scotland that next year your council tax will be frozen. Yeah. And that's the SNP delivering for people when they need it the most. <laughs> Conference as well as supporting people during these tough times. We need to do everything we can to support our public services. And there is no more cherished an institution than our National Health Service. The SNP are already providing record funding to our health service. We have the best performing a &E units in the UK. But increased waiting lists are the inevitable consequence of the necessary decisions we had to make during the pandemic. We're working hard to reduce these. We've seen significant reductions in the longest waits since targets were announced last July. We've opened two national treatment centres this year in Fife and Highland, dedicated centres for elective procedures. And by the end of this year, we'll expand that capacity with a new centre in Forth Valley 
and the second phase of NHS Golden Jubilee in Glasgow. The conference, too many people are still waiting too long for treatment. And that's why I'm announcing today that in each of the next three years, we will provide an extra £100 million to cut waiting lists in our NHS. <laughs> this additional £300 million of investment will allow us to maximise capacity, build greater resilience into the who have waited far too long. This will reduce waiting lists by an estimated 100,000 patients by 2026. When our NHS needs us, this party steps up, delivering for patients, delivering for our NHS and, crucially, delivering for Scotland. Well, that's uh, Hamza Youssef speaking at the SNP party conference. We've got a bit of a dodgy audio, so uh, it's probably wise to come out from that. But he, he did make a few uh, comments on there. He, he talked about, um, he did, of course, talk about the, the terrible fact that a lot of his members of his family are in Gaza. Um, he also talked, uh, said that each person must feel safe and there's no room for anti-Semitism, anti-Muslim sentiment either or anything of negative connotations in that manner. He um, said he, he would like to, us to have some sort of international kind of service like we did with the people U of Ukraine. He's calling on the international community to come together and to create some sort of campaign to help the people from Gaza. Um, he also talked about building a fairer society um, and he said that this was meant to be a rich country but yet so many uh, Suffering, and he also said that he, um, he the, the SNP have done quite a few good things, like scrapping peak time fares, scrapping prescription charges, and um, the biggest ever reduction in the attainment gap. He said, as a result of the SNP, 90,000 fewer children are living in poverty. And he also said that he'd like to do everything that they can to support public services. And he went on to talk about the NHS.